When I was a child, I didn't even know about the Cold War. I learned about the concept when I was a student. And it seemed to me that these times are gone forever. As it seemed to me that full-scale war is impossible in the 21st century. But it all returned back because of Putin and Russian citizens. I often ask myself, what is the difference, what is the main difference between modern Russia and modern ISIS? And the answer is nuclear weapons that Russia possesses. And that is a huge problem. I have bad news for all of us. Well, actually, this is not news and this is also bad. Russia possesses three types of weapons of mass destruction. And these are nuclear weapons, biological weapons and chemical weapons. Russia uses some of these weapons against Ukraine and other countries, for example, chemical ones, going against all international regulations. Russia is one of five countries that possesses nuclear weapons and that threatens the world to use them. Actually, it is the only one. Today, one of the arguments that prevents the world from adequate reaction on Russian crimes in Ukraine is actually the weapons, the nuclear weapons that Russia possesses. So I have decided to look deeper into Russia and nuclear weapons relations and it turns out that today Russia possesses a total of 5,977 nuclear warheads. Uh, that was in 2022 and actually this is the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons in the world with the United States being on the second place. The number of missiles ready to be launched in Russia is a little bit smaller than in the United States. In Russia it is 1588 or something and in the United States it is 1644. But it goes in no comparison to the Soviet Union. In 1986 the stockpile of nuclear weapons in Soviet Union was equal to 45,000, an evil empire. Soviet atomic bomb project was a dream of Joseph Stalin. It looks so natural for Joseph Stalin to dream about such things. Soviet researchers worked on it since 1930s, but the real development came directly after the Second World War. And the push for that was the fact that Stalin learned about Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings and started pushing the project harder. And lots of Soviet spies were introduced to uh, the American Manhattan Project and tried to collect information from there. And what is also important, lots of German scientists who worked on the atomic bomb project in Nazi Germany were invited to Soviet Union to continue their research there. On the August, on the 29th of August 1949, a successful atomic bomb test took place in Kazakhstan. Stalin, all Soviet leadership and scientists were elated. The experiment was successful and used a copy of an American atomic bomb as a model for it. Starting from 1949, Soviet Union continued manufacturing atomic bombs like crazy. That was their true vocation. In the history of the Cold War, they have conducted 715 tests of atomic bombs and that is the larger number of experiments on the planet. They loved doing it and they loved escalating the relations between the communist state and the democratic countries of the world. It is also important to remember that actions of Soviet Union and the constructions of a huge stockpile of atomic bombs led to the appearance of doctrine now known as mutually assured destruction. And that is why all of us are afraid of nuclear bombings.
But the task of this video is not to stress all of us out and cause general anxiety. I want to demonstrate you the attitude so popular in Russian society. And it is closely connected with the testing of atomic bombs. According to the materials that became open after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and these are actually Russian documents, starting from 1949 and finishing in 1990, in general, Soviet Union conducted 969 tests of atomic bombs, not caring about their health and environmental influences. They were not thinking much about the locations they used to test atomic bombs and the influence it has on the health of people living there or working there. This is very typical for Russians. And we have to understand that threatening the world, they actually threaten themselves and they don't care much about the results and consequences of their totally absurd actions. Before the United Nations banned atmospheric tests of atomic bombs, Soviet Union managed to check 214 atomic explosions in the atmosphere, sending myriads of toxic radioactive elements on the land of Soviet Union. Perhaps the most uh, polluted district is in Kazakhstan, Semipalatinsk. Hundreds of thousands of its inhabitants live in the environment polluted with various radioactive elements causing serious genetic mutations and, of course, extremely carcinogenic. So mainly when we think about atomic bombs, we think about the tragedies they can bring to the countries they will be targeted at. But we rarely think about the evil they bring to the countries that develop them. And they cause serious pollution and serious radiation, especially if scientists and people responsible for their creation do not care much. And in Russia and in Soviet Union, people do not care much about human lives and human health. An example to that may be a small Lake Karachai. It was used to deposit millions of cubic meters of polluted materials. And since 1950s, it is a zone of exclusion, not heavily populated. But people do not think long in Russia before doing some serious things. For example, depositing polluted materials. So let's look how Russians work with radioactive waste. And that will tell you a lot about Russian strategies. So they have picked that small Lake Karachai in an isolated region as a place to deposit radioactive waste. And they started collecting it without measuring the abilities of that small lake. Then a drought came. And the water in the lake dried in 1967. Serious winds took this radioactive dust to the thousand of kilometers, causing serious health problems in half a million of people who live in the adjacent region. That was a serious health risk and these radioactive elements still remained in the affected soils. They had to do something. They had to stop this dust from traveling around the territory, so they invented another solution. They decided to put concrete about the lake and stop this dust from traveling in the atmosphere. A very smart solution. I mean, smart solution. Why? Because the pressure of the concrete about the lake led to better absorption of radioactive elements and pretty soon they got into the water supply that was used by people living in that territory. Russia is a very closed country and it doesn't like sharing information about its internal problems. It often speaks about flaws of the rotting west, but never demonstrates even the statistics of its own regions. So we never know how many people on the territory of Lake Karachai are influenced by radioactive waste and how this radioactive production changed lives and environment of Russia. 
they do not focus on that. This irresponsible attitude to dangerous radioactive elements is very characteristic of Putin. If you ask me about one of my first memories that I have with this dark historical figure, not yet historical, which is bad, I wish him to die out in history, but one of the first memories that I have is year 2000 and Russian submarine Kursk that is sinking. And the whole world is observing in online regime how people are dying on that submarine and no serious rescue operation is planned because Putin wants them to die together with Russian secrets and Russian nuclear weapons. As a poor and underdeveloped country, Russia tries to turn its uh, nuclear weapon production sites into the radioactive waste dump. And I think it so beautifully describes what modern Russia is, a radioactive waste dump or swamp. But uh, inviting other countries to send their radioactive waste, Russia has not accepted some important documents yet and it is just on words. But this is honestly perhaps one of the best functions that Russia can perform in this modern time. After the collapse of Soviet Union in 1991, Russia decided to describe itself as the legitimate successor of the Soviet Union in the cases that promised profit. In the cases that did not promise profit, Russia forgot about that. Nuclear weapons remained in four of the former republics in Russia, Belarus, Ukraine and Kazakhstan. Being always democratic, free and wanting to move westwards, Ukraine decided to give up its nuclear weapon potential. And back in that time, in the 90s, it was seen as an extremely clever and modern step, supported by the countries. We signed Budapest Memorandum that assured the territories of Ukraine will forever be protected by Russia, the United States and the United Kingdom. China and France also guaranteed peace and sovereignty to Ukraine. Let's look deeper into this situation. Today, Budapest Memorandum and our decision to sign it is seen as a huge mistake and I always repeat that in my vlogs. But it shouldn't be like that. If we look at Budapest Memorandum and the idea of nuclear disarmament of Ukraine, that is an example of a very modern, very environmentally friendly and sustainable attitude. Ukraine was actually right signing this Budapest Memorandum. The problem is with Russia that attacked Ukraine in 2014 and started full-scale war in 2022. My name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I constantly live under the threat of nuclear bombing from Russia. My Facebook feed looks a little bit different than yours. In it, I often come across tips and advice how to survive a nuclear explosion. We also know that nuclear power stations that are located close to the places where we live another dangerous point. We constantly think if it is likely. From one point of view, my logic and experience tells me no, it is not likely that Russia will use nuclear weapons. But from the other point of view, the start of this war against strong and independent Ukraine was totally illogical too. Let me know what do you think is nuclear war actually possible between Russia and the democratic world? And if you want to know more about Ukraine, Russian war in Ukraine and Soviet myths and crimes, do subscribe to our channel.